they normally say, just put your stuff out there. You don't know who's watching. Child, say that again. Someone saw a post I had put about sweet potatoes. I didn't know that was a director of an NGO wow. that really needed to... They have their project on food security and stuff like that. Yeah. I had a contract of thousands of acres to do for them. Many of my friends actually thought, hey, Jael, the ones who are calling, are you seriously in the village? Is it that bad, Jael? Is, is life that bad that you decided? Really sympathizing with me. Can I get you something to do? I don't want a job. What part of this statement don't you understand, guys? I, I'm not looking for a job. I would have contacted you. I was looking for a job. I've had opportunities and I've given them to guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking for I'm just fine here. And they, it's so hard for people to understand that simple statement that you are comfortable in a village. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started uh, my channel, I was actually not telling people the truth. Like, uh, I believed village life is supposed to be something boring because i just wanted to to fit in because everyone doing village content african village content they are showing the struggle they have to show the struggle so i started showing the struggle then i realized eh, where am i going with this because this is not my life yes. so i decided to show the real life what other job opportunities are in the village? Because I feel like a lot of people think farming is the only thing no, you no, can no, do. No, 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 no. I think any business you can do in the cities, you can now do in the village. Yeah. So devolution of power has made everything possible in the village. Yeah. very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS and I'm not going to lie guys I will not leave this out really tempted to call it the village edition because I'm in such a beautiful place in Kabondo Nyanza this is my first time here and I know guys you are used to the yellow coach but guys me I'm done there I said I want to travel a while you know I just want to travel Kidogo and get to hear stories from people outside Nairobi and what are the chances that I get to discover this incredible person on, on her YouTube channel which I want you guys to subscribe even before we go any further because she's living her life. She's living a very beautiful life in the village and she's about to inspire us with her story but do you also know who are other people who are doing great buildings in our country? You already know who our partners on today's conversations are Kings Developers Limited, Asante Nisana for coming through this show and I keep saying if you want to get yourself an apartment it doesn't matter your budget they cater to everyone they have affordable housing medium range upper so if you have 4 million or 30 million they are going to cater for you guys and I love that they have beautiful amenities the finishing is beautiful I saw certified so that you guys don't end up getting conned so if you are looking into settling in Nairobi why don't you try Kings Developers Limited and to say thank you to my team who came all the way uh, with me here scholar edgar muga joshua and of course kelvin and sam for compiling this episode and making sure you guys get to watch it right on time i know i'm talking a lot but if you are watching this episode without subscribing you are doing a great disservice to our channel please subscribe so that you can support us with algorithm and so that youtube can uh, recommend our work to a lot of people and now without further ado guys please allow me to let my girl in adera introduce herself good morning morning Lynn. hi jael hi lynn i'm so grateful <laughs> you guys came around yeah i did not know you could come to kabondo what you know we are so deep in the village i didn't expect you to be here no i'm here like i'm here i love it it's so beautiful i even said your name for you <laughs> so let me just shut up before they say you're talking too much okay. please introduce yourself thank you 
My name is Jail Ochanji, popularly yeah. known as Jail of the Village yeah. because of my YouTube channel. I am a village girl, a country girl. I was born and raised in the village. And uh, just like any other village child, mm -hmm. my dream was to go to the big city when I'm done with high school. Yes. And after high school, I went to the big city. I witnessed. And here I am back in the village. Back <laughs> where, where it all began. You know, the, the thing is, even because I have a lot of village life experience. Yes. Now I feel like I just want to, like I made a joke and I said, Waniache tu hapa. Like every one of us right now wants to come back to the village. You, you are already here. How does it feel to exist in such a beautiful space? It feels really, really nice. I must say my life in the city was a bit chaotic. Yeah. And uh, after working for 10 years, I felt that was really not my passion. I really wanted some peace. Yes. I just wanted a relaxing environment. Mm. So I retired at the age of 36. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> to come and start a new life in the village. Yeah. Yes. Let me ask you, are you, you a mom also? I am a mother of two. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I know, personally, I know you have a son and you uh, have your uh, daughter. Dora, yes. How do they feel about mom living in the village? Uh, to be honest, my son being a teenager really has issues <laughs> <laughs> coming to the village. But for my yes. daughter, mm. where mom is, she's always fine. Okay. So my daughter ad adapted very well to the village and she really loves the calm in the village. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy a lot of time with her in the village. She's so, so happy. Okay. The only challenge we had is finding a good school in the village when we moved. Mm -hmm. So I was forced to send my daughter to a boarding school. Okay. Yeah. I have so many questions. And I know a lot of people who are watching and they're inspired to come and settle in a village. They have those questions. So sure. I'm going to let you walk us through your story the best way you know how. Because to retire at 36, me, I want to understand about the savings. I want to know the discipline that came with you wanting to come back sure. at a time where you could be partying, Uko, Nairobi. So if you could take us uh, through your story, maybe growing up so we get to understand you working getting the income to come in did you buy the land how did you go about it what were the challenges so i'm just gonna leave the floor and to you okay i would say we had a good childhood growing up in the village it was so peaceful yes we were raised to work very hard we worked in our farms we supported our far parents in the farms because my dad was an education officer and my mom was a housewife so my dad was mainly out there working and we were raised by my mom most yes. of the time. Though we were in boarding school, we only came home during the holidays. Mm -hmm. But when we came home, we were trained to work. We had a house girl, but we worked like her. We did all the chores with her. We shared like she was one of us. Yes. So we were raised yeah. to work very hard. People see me doing stuff, feeding the cows, doing stuff around there and they're like, you can do that, yes. I was taught to do that mm -hmm. while I was growing up. Yeah. So it's not really something I would shy away from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say we had a good childhood. Yes. We were raised well. And our parents gave us the best they could. Mm -hmm. Actually, I grew up in this house. Wow. I was born and raised in this house. Wow. <laughs> so after school, then we all went out there to look for jobs. We all went out to college first. Yes. Then we ended up getting jobs and starting new lives out there in the city. Mm -hmm. So after I myself landed in a sales job. Yeah. And uh, you know the challenge with sales, eh? the targets, the pressure. So I didn't really have a life because most of the time you're at work, mm -hmm. you have to leave early, you have to get home late. And I had kids, so I didn't have much time with my children. And my daughter, I think, was more fond of my house girl than me, because you leave early and come home when she's asleep. So I really looked into myself, I searched into my soul, and I asked myself, is this really what I want? Because every child wants to be part of their child's life. Every parent wants to be part of their child's life. Mm. But I was not part of my children's life. So I felt mm. I needed something more fulfilling, something more relaxing, something yeah. that would make me spend more time with my people and the people I love. 
that's when I made the decision mm -hmm. to move to the village. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. before moving to the village, of course, there are things you have to consider. You are not just going to wake up one day and uh, say, I'm going to the village. Mm. No. You have to have an income there. You have to know how you're going to live. Where are you going to live? How are you going to earn a living there? So two years before I resigned, I started uh, doing a few things here and there. Like mm -hmm. uh, I started farming seriously, but I was more of a telephone farmer. Oh. I would send my mom money. Yes. Then we have a few pieces of land around. Mm. Then she would uh, plant. We, are, we have a lot of sweet potatoes. Yes. Actually, the sweet potatoes you eat in Kenya come from Kabondo. Tell them. You should know that. Tell them. We even export. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> so I also started farming. Yes. But I started small scale. Like I started with about two acres. Mm -hmm. And lean the first time, I, I didn't know, I also didn't know farming would give so much. My mom was always farming, but I didn't know how much she was earning from it. Yeah. So when I tried, I started with the two acres. I earned over 200K from that in just five months. I said, oh, wow, this is possible. So I went full throttle. <laughs> I started real farming. Other than farming, I also started importing clothes. Yes. So I would go across borders and get uh, some clothing and I would sell to my colleagues mostly. Yeah. So I was the kind of girl when it's time to go home or lunch hour. Yes. Nafungua boot. Nafungua boot. Kujeni. Nunueni. Yes. Na umeform WhatsApp group. Yes. You're updating them. <laughs> <laughs> I was selling to my colleagues and yeah. I was also farming at the same time. Mm. So when I realized farming would actually give me so much money, then I asked myself, yeah. I don't even add this much. Why, why should I be here? So that's when I got serious about farming and I did about 20 acres. <laughs> so the money was really good. Yeah. But I want to warn you, it's not always good. There are bad seasons for farmers also. So like uh, last year we had a prolonged drought. Yes. So there are also low seasons, but always if everything stays the way it is, mm. the way it is expected to be, then the returns are good. Okay. So that's how I offset my village life. Then I loved posting on Facebook a lot yes. about my sweet potatoes. Yeah. I, this is what is happening. I take photos in the farm and post. And uh, some they, they normally say, just put your stuff out there. You don't know who's watching. So I'll say that again. Because I'm me. tired. <laughs> I get, allow me, sorry, we're going to yes. go back. Put that statement you just made, put your stuff out there. You never know. It you will. never know who will come across I didn't across expect it. you to be here. Oh, come Look on. Now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll add my thoughts on that later. Let me not. Uh, mm -hmm. So I always put content there yeah. for fun, for the likes on Facebook. Yes. I was getting nothing out of it, actually. So someone saw a post I had put about sweet potatoes. I didn't know that was a director of an NGO wow. that really needed to, they have the project on food security and stuff like that. Yeah. I had a contract of thousands of acres to do for them. And that was a major breakthrough for me. And I built my mansion. <laughs> it's, it's still <laughs> in progress, but yes. at least I can say I got this from farming. Yeah. Yes. So even now, I still do farming a lot. I love farming. I do maize, beans. I do potatoes. I'm just an all-round farmer, and I also have my little garden. Yes. So I started my journey to self-sufficiency while in the village. You know, you don't want to buy everything. And then with the state of our food currently, you just want to grow your own food because we are told there is a lot of dangerous substances being used on the vegetables we are consuming. So I think it's really important that we all grow something. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started my own garden. I'm 
keeping my own chicken, so I'm getting my own eggs. So at least I'm eating things that I know are clean, Fresh. organic and healthy. Yeah. Yes. That's beautiful. Thank you. Allow me to take you back. Okay. Right? So at 36, you decide, I don't want to work anymore. That you had already started doing the cassava, uh, sorry, the sweet, sweet potatoes. potatoes. Yes. You had already started yes. that. So when you go and tell people, I'm moving back to the village, where are you living, your daughter? Uh, are they not asking you questions? Mom, what do you mean? Yeah. So many questions. My friends, <laughs> there's a video I did about uh, people saying, I'm struggling. Yes. You remember that one? Yes. Yes. Many of my friends actually thought, hey, Jail, the ones who are calling, are you seriously in the village? Did you, is it that bad, Jail? Is, is life that bad that you decided? I don't know why. We think living in the village is such a miserable thing that people sympathize with you when they hear you're now living in the village. So those are a few questions I've been getting mm. and I'd just love <laughs> to let you know. I'd like to let you know it's really okay. I'm having the time of my life. Yes. <laughs> and uh, for my daughter, I didn't have a problem. Mm. Of course, my son, I've told you, had issues being a teenager and still enjoying his city life. Yes. He's now in college. Mm -hmm. So for him, I, I let him be. But uh, during Christmas, we all gather here. Mm. So that's how it goes with them. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. Back to farming now. Because yes. I see that's where you got your major now source of income. Yes. About posting, because that's the point I wanted to go back to. When you got this deal, because you are now moving from small scale farming to this large deal that you've been gotten, what are some of the measures that you took and how did the deal go for you? It went so well. I delivered. Mm -hmm. It was uh, such a big deal. Eh? Yeah. Because you can imagine you are moving from your 20 acres and then someone tells you, I want 5,000 acres of sweet potatoes. I picked up, I took up the challenge. Yeah, I, I'm a person who believes in herself. I'm a go-getter. Mm. So I don't think there is anything possible. If someone says or if someone else has done something, I don't believe something can really be impossible. Mm -hmm. I believe in possibilities. So I took up the challenge and I delivered and they were happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, love, we love that you took up the opportunity. Yes, I took it. And you, and you delivered. Yes. So now exporting sweet potatoes, that's something that you do. Okay. Uh, the challenge I've had with exporting sweet potatoes mm -hmm. was uh, getting the export license. It's quite a challenge getting it. Yes. So I was exporting through another organization. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm. How is it? Okay, there is uh, someone who already had an export license mm -hmm. and they were taking to Sudan. So she, I would just deliver to her in Nairobi. Yeah. Then she does her thing. Mm. We also exported to the UK some time back. Yeah. But that little, when the pandemic came, mm -hmm. that one also just flopped. Yeah. And we haven't resumed that. So now I sell my potatoes locally. Yes. Yes, at the Wakulima market. Yeah. That market is uh, has a lot of opportunity. It's never failed, by the way. Yeah. However much the potatoes come, you will still sell. Mm. And then now I have a rapport with the people of the market. I don't have to travel. Yeah. No, I don't have to. Mm. I prepare my potatoes, load them into a truck and send them to them. And that's they just send me my money. Oh, that's yeah. good. So I think it's also made my work very easy Yes. with the potato business. Smart business. Yes, okay. it's smart business now. Yes. Yes. You've mentioned kids. Yes. When you come back now to the village, this is your home now. Mm -hmm. Your home. <laughs> what happens to you like... Um, marriage like did you experience any marriage before or how 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 was that like for you okay yes i was married before yes way before i retired oh you just retired at that zip come on yes so yeah. i i was married at the age of 32 i think i i left that marriage in less than a year <laughs> <laughs> no, I just realized I couldn't do it, Elaine. Yes. You know, we are born different. Eh? Yeah. So I 
Okay, maybe I don't want to discourage anyone. Maybe mine was bad. Someone yes. else's could be good. good. But I don't like being told what to do. Mm. You know, there's a way marriage puts you in a position where you box. can't do things on your own. I'm a lady who loves development. I love to do things. Then you find a partner who maybe is not development conscious. Mm -hmm. And then the problem is you have to consult before you do things. I wish women would be made to do things on their own. It would be seen as people who can make decisions. Because mostly in the African society, as a woman, if you're married, you can't do something without consulting your husband, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and then you find... You're just two parallel people. <laughs> You're, You're not, not going to sit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I quit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't working for me. Yeah. But I have no regrets. Yes. And I don't think I want to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> what if the person is compatible? What if you will get with not someone the person, that lets Not even you... that specific person. The marriage space. I don't want to get married. Why? It's a decision I've made. Yeah, and we respect that. Yes, and I'm so happy. I think... I'd rather spend my time going for holidays than yeah. <laughs> with my kids than <laughs> with a man. It's not bad. <laughs> no, it was just my experience wasn't mm. good. Yeah. I don't know about others, but I believe I've seen people who are really in love and it's a good relationship, but mine just... Yes, but you can't let one experience discourage you though. No, I think I've just I've just made up my mind. It's okay. And we <laughs> that's also a decision that can be respected. Yes, you, you can know. be single by choice. Yes, yes, and it can be respected. Yeah. Talk to me about life in the village. What what sets it apart from the city? What are some of the things that you have enjoyed and some of the questions people are asking you? How do you answer? The birds have gone for a walk. I, yeah. wish, I wish they were around. <laughs> yes. It will give you one reason why I love the village. Normally, I sit here. You know, people think when you're in the village, just work, 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 work. Yes. No, there's nothing much to do, actually. And then I love that we do things at our own pace. Mm -hmm. We don't have targets. We don't have deadlines. We don't have people pushing you around. There's not much pressure. Mm -hmm. It's things you do at your own pace. If uh, I feel cold in the morning and I don't want to get up, I sleep until when I want to. Where? Then I get up and roll my camera, yes. <laughs> do what I want to do. Yeah. So I think it's the relaxed kind of life. And then the peace around it. It's just beautiful sitting here, breathing the fresh air, yeah. eating clean food. Mm. And uh, I think <laughs> I really feel... I don't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. You don't miss the city. I don't. And that's why my friends are really wondering because I was the party girl. Yeah. You oh, see yeah. those rimba clubs no. on Nairobi? Yes. <laughs> and a pit stop. Ah, yeah, that one is <laughs> 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 But I gave it all up. I mean, there is a point in life when you feel some things become really meaningless. For how long are you going to party? And then you've partied in all the clubs, you know, there. It's time to get a new life. There's always that time to move. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel it was my time to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I even quit alcohol. Oh. I know many of my friends don't even <laughs> believe it. <laughs> it's been two years now, by the way. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, I've been clean for two years. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Well, what does this place do to your mind, though? Like, for me, I feel like I, I feel now so free. Lynn, when I was in Nairobi, especially when I was working, I think that job really kind of damaged me. Because uh, do you ever get home and you're just hostile to people? Because of your pressures of work, it's like you carry them to the house. And you're just yelling at your kids. It's not really you, but the environment influences your behavior. Mm. So I think my work environment influenced my behavior. There was too much pressure. And I put that pressure on my kids. Now I'm so relaxed. We, we, we spend most of the time just laughing here, <laughs> just having a good time. Mm. So I think it, also, it has also really helped my mental health, just being at peace, mm. Mm. not much pressures. That's nice. Mm. And you get now bills. And I have no bills. The only bill we have here oh. is electricity bill of 1,600 hey. a month. Hey. <laughs> so do we need to count for you our garbage bill, our electricity so, the rent, no. the what do you this and this? Lakini tax bado inafikia uku. 
Okay, okay, I don't come for me. <laughs> I don't want you here. So you don't want them here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bills. They are very small. Yeah, because we harvest our own water. We I think we should have even done solar. I think we'd be having zero bills. Yes. Yeah. But still we appreciate it's a very small thing. Mm. We pay per month. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the things we get for free. Free food and th I think we buy salt, sugar, those and a cooking oil. Yeah, cooking oil. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of vegetables mm. in my garden. The weather has been a bit, we've not been having rain. See, it's yes. El Nino and it's a bit dry here. Yes. Yeah, we've not started receiving the rains, but yeah. when it's raining, the garden is always lush mm -hmm. with a lot of food. Mm -hmm. So it's a really quiet, relaxed life. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. A question I know majority of the people watching will be like, if I move now back to the village, the land getting corn, is it a good decision for me to move? How should I do it? What would you ha did have you ever gotten conned along the way? Uh, when it comes to land, mm. yes, you know before there were con men only in the cities, right? But these days, especially in prime places like Kabondo, is a I can call it Kabondo it prime land. Prime. We have good roads, mm. and then uh, because of it. Uh, it's natural beauty and we have good soils here. Yeah. People are really scrambling for Kabondo. You see, if, you, if you're driving around, you've seen the fenced areas. Those are people who are coming in. So the con men have also moved to the village. You can get them. So it's just important that when you're buying land, do your due diligence as you do with the anywhere else. Yes. And uh, this land, you can still get land. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's mm, land. There is land. Okay. And making your land beautiful mm. is also very important. I know. Yes. Right? You can imagine what just building a nice house with no tree, no flower, and then it's just standing in the middle of some Stones. desert. It doesn't look nice. Mm. So I think it's also very important that you invest in mm. your the beauty of your home. A friend of mine calls it environmental intelligence. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. So... That's why you see a lot of trees, flowers. Yeah. It's not that I'm even uh, a professional mm. florist or anything. Yeah, you did this? Yes. Wow, it's beautiful. So we are just passionate about our environment. environment. So yeah. when I'm driving around, I see a nice tree, a nice flower, I always pick, and then I just come and plant. Oh. I do the same to my home. One day I'll take yes. you to my home. Yes. Then you will see what I've done. There. I know it's a mansion, guys. I <laughs> wanted really to show you that mansion, but we gotta wait for the reveal. Yes. Yeah, because I feel like it should be on your channel first before it's on our channel. True. The reveal, which I know a lot of people are waiting for. Uh, it's coming yeah. soon. <laughs> but how much have you invested, though? I'm really interested in knowing. In uh, your mansion. So far, 4.6 m. Yeah. But it's still. We are. I know you guys have really been asking about it. Yes. I think we'll pick up from next week. I'm yeah. going to resume the project from next week. Mm. So there'll be videos coming yeah. about the home, yes. my home. Yes, yeah, which is good. Mm -hmm. But uh, would you say construction? Because this is not, this is your dad's house. Yes, this one here right now. Yes, who did this? Uh, Lena was born in this house. No, we and raised here. No, we but it didn't look like this. We gave it a facelift some yes. years back. Yeah. Yes. You know, you also need to upgrade your parents as you move. Eh? Yes. They've they already built the house. Yeah. So why don't we make it look a bit modern? You know, so a house that was built in in the late seventies. Yes. So you also make have to make it look a bit modern. Mm -hmm. So. That's why we, we just gave it a first lift. No, and I love that's what people are commenting you for. Yes. Just taking care of your parents before yes, yourself. We really have to take care of them. They yes. did an amazing job. You know, why, way back, we didn't have these academies and whatever schools that we have now. Mm. So any parent who wanted good education for their children would take them to boarding schools. And boarding schools were really expensive, expensive. then. And there were eight of us. Mm. And you can imagine all of us were in boarding schools. So I really think they sacrificed so much. That is the reason to just make them mm. really comfortable now. Mm. So I'm that's white. it. <laughs> yeah? white. Yes, in the village. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hiro <laughs> 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 
And how come mud is not even on the wall though? This is so beautiful. No, there's a section there that is uh oh, chafuka, but uh, we 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 do some maintenance at yes. least uh, once or twice a year we paint it. Ah, it yes. Yeah. To keep it white because mm. we want it white. Yes. So it's a white you house. have to <laughs> You just have to do it. Mm. Yes. Let's move to the people's perception of a village life. You said it's like when you move back to the village, people think you're desperate. Maybe you your life has come maskini, to an end. Mm. or something like that. Mm. Huh? Why are you demystifying that myth? Okay, I think for those who watch my channel, already you can see the village life mm -hmm. is not that bad. Eh? Yes. It is not actually bad. I love it. People around here, you know, we still live like a community. People really love each other here. And uh, I don't see a reason anyone should really despise or hate the village. Mm -hmm. I think it's that uh, perception we had from the time that we were kids that a good life is in the city. So we were raised to believe that people who have made it in life are in the city. But I'm glad the uh, devolution came. And uh, see my Peter petrol station, Pali? Yes. Who feels there? See the villages? Yes. Yes, the villages are now developed. And uh, we have most of the things that you have in this. We have electricity, we have water, we, you harvest your own water. But electricity was the big deal. There are lights in the city, the village is dark. Yeah. Make your village beautiful. And you will love it. Mm. And I'm glad my channel is changing many people's perception about the village. People are really loving the village. You know, when I started uh, my channel, I was actually not telling people the truth. Like, uh, I believed village life is supposed to be something boring. I think you saw a video I did about... Uh, going to the river, walking, I don't know how many kilometers to yes. the river. Okay, I did walk to that river, yes. but that is not my life. I don't know, because I just wanted to, to fit in, because everyone doing village content, African village content. They are showing the struggle. They have to show the struggle. So I started showing the struggle, then I realized, eh, where am I going with this? Because Muisho, this is not my life. Yes. So I decided to show the real life and to be different because it's not about struggle, struggle. There's a better life in the village, and it's not always the bad things you see about the village, because mm. I've seen other people, people from the US asking me, is that really Africa, or this is, I don't know, the, uh, it's Africa, it's Kabondo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. People don't even think this is Africa, like. It is Kabondo. Yeah. Yeah, so let's not, think that the village is such a horrible place and I think your life is you can make it whatever you want it to be and uh, for me my dream was to okay I loved the city buildings the lights and everything so in my mind I wanted to carry the city and, and bring it to the quiet of the village that's why I built my mansion deep inside a village because I want the good life yes but I want it in a different setting. I don't want the noises of the city. I just want the birds. <laughs> and maybe a few picky pickies passing. Yes. That's all I want. I don't want the noise. Yeah. Yes. Your birds are back, by the way. Yes, they, they'll come. Yeah, they are back. I can, hear, I can hear them around telling you, yes, go on, go on. So yeah. there's nothing about the city that you miss, though. No, I don't. Mm. I don't really miss the city. Actually, there's a time... Uh, Radio Ramogi had called me yes. and I was just there for a day. Eh, it was too much for me. The traffic, you know, yeah, when I leave, I'm going to Kisumu. Yes. I drive to Kisumu. Yeah. I stayed in traffic. I'm like, eh, Nairobi. Oh, wow. When am I going back to the village? <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> Fighting traffic, a lot of people, the noises. You're in the house and you can still hear the noises mm. from the surrounding. Mm. I think I'm enjoying the peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you've given me an idea. The way you've said, people even in the U.S., they are asking you uh, whether this is really in a village. I think I will not go document the suffering. Mm -hmm. I want to document people that are uplifting themselves yes, in the village. True. I think that for me is really good. Yeah, I yeah. think I, I was living a lie in the beginning because mm -hmm. I'm trying to be what I'm not. 
<laughs> a villager. The villager, yes, I wanted mm. to put that villager tag, eh? yes. which is not really my life. So yeah. at some point, when yeah. it is fake, Naisha. Very fast. Yes. Very fast. So I was faking a village life that I'm not living. That's yeah. why at some point, eh, now what next? So my brother told me, why don't you just be real? <laughs> you know, it's my brother who actually introduced me to YouTube. Yeah. I used to post a lot on Facebook yeah. and I'm like, why are you wasting your time here doing this thing? Nobody's paying you. Do these things on YouTube, you'll get money, make videos. Yes. So he, he my little brother is the one who actually introduced me mm. to YouTube. I used to think it's something for some other class. Eh? I didn't know anybody could just wake yeah. up and start YouTube. Yeah. So once he introduced me, I can hear too evil. So I figured it out myself. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people asking me how I film and edit my videos. That is also a very major question on my channel. Mm -hmm. Well, I never learned to shoot or edit anyway. I just took my camera and got it rolling. So the big thing that really made me shoot maybe better videos, I don't, I didn't even know I was shooting good videos, is uh, always I asked myself when watching someone else, especially those who really make those cinematic videos, yes. I always ask myself, where was this camera when, when, when this was being taken, this shot was being taken? Mm -hmm. I think that's what really helped me to make better shots. Yeah, mm -hmm. you keep challenging yourself. Yes. And I hope that is what many people can take home. You know, don't be, don't be shy and don't and be don't fake about your anything work. Back. And don't hold anything yeah. back. And you know, you said something important, fake ends as soon as it starts true. it doesn't last but look at now the beautiful attention you are receiving from people because of documenting so, so your truth like doc be just being you and your mandazi yes you know? so i'm so glad people appreciate it yes you no know, when i started uh, there were a few people hey, show off show off. how do you show off what is your normal life you know it's your normal it's not a show off it's your normal so i'm glad uh, as people keep uh, subscribing mm. uh, there are a lot of people who are appreciating it yeah and a lot of people have shown interest in uh, village life people are asking well you can find land in the village mm. and uh, it doesn't have to be kabondo most parts of kenya are really beautiful mm. it's you to do your research and uh, get that beautiful place and maybe just invest in a, a good home mm. something you want you know lean when you're building your village home most people look to get to the villages due for retirement, right? Okay, for me, I took an early retirement, but most people are looking for it to be a place they go mm. when they're old. Mm. But think of it as, this is where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. Eh? How would I want to live? How would I want to die? Do I want to die in a dirty place? Yeah. No. No. So just make your life as comfortable as possible in the village. Build the house you want. I see people saying, hey, why do you build so much, such a big house? For No, that is how I want it. I want that big house. So it is. it has been a dream. Yes. Why can't I fulfill my dream if I can? So I don't think anything should hold you back. I'm old. Let me build a small house. I know. Have the space. Live your life. It is your life. Allow me and to this end. is where you're going to live for the rest of your life. Yes. <laughs> you are not going to change. The village is the final place. Mm -hmm. So if you decided to build in the village, just build what your heart desires. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, like... Uh, Usijifinilia. Usijifinilia, that's the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Na usiogope. Na usiogope. Yeah. Start. I always tell people, just start with that fear. Start mm -hmm. with whatever you have. Never wait for... People wait for let me. I, I I need some millions to start. No, if you already you have some hundreds of hundreds of thousands mm. by the land. Mm. Okay, pattern gine kidogo start your foundation. Mm. Mudogo mudogo. I've been building my house since 2020, Jaisha. But I'm going. But I'm building my dream house. I'm not going to build anything small because it need it requires less money or more money. Mm. I want to build what my heart really desires yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah talk I think. yeah talk to the people in diaspora because i see them also on the comment how can i get a la i saw someone saying they want 10 acres 
oh, and yeah. you are like you can't get I, I doubt you can <laughs> oh, get so that to, to get but if someone is looking into coming now not even the people in diaspora mm. even Nairobi now for you I know it's like a diaspora ikombali sana the city life the only dia- so for the people who are watching and they would want to come to the village what are some of the three things they need to look out for first have a source of income because when you need the village you'll also require income you if you have a car you have to drive you'll need fuel there has to be a source of income yeah uh, the second thing is get a place and a good house to live in get a place your heart desires don't just live in a place because maybe it is uh, ancestral land mm. no you have to be comfortable wherever you are so get a place that is really comfortable for you mm. and then your security is also really important in the village yes yeah not all villages are safe like mine <laughs> okay mine is really safe mm. i really don't have to worry i can walk here in the middle of the night and mm. i'm sure yeah. nobody is going to attack me so those are uh, a few really important things mm. that you have to consider when moving to the village if you have kids i think you also have to consider schools and that kind of stuff mm. because in Kenya there's still a challenge when it comes to education the rural schools are really not mm. as advanced yeah so that's why I was sent, forced to send my girl to boarding school mm. quite unfortunate but I didn't have a choice yeah mm-hmm. let me the stereotypes that come also with building such a beautiful space some are like your mansion where you're building it mm. the stereotype that because i've seen some people don't like now going and building back the village mm. when or mm. something like that those stereotypes how would you address that that's why mm. i've said go to a place you're comfortable if you think unarogwa huko <laughs> but here i've not heard of mtu anarogwa mm. because they have some good no, property no wanafia unaona kuna mtu anasemanga nyota yangu itapotea itapotea <laughs> okay those those things happen mm. i used not to believe in witchcraft but i realized uh, after really reading the bible so much i realized god also gave powers to satan to also do his thing eh? so it is possible that uh, someone could roga you or mm. those kind of things this witchcraft yes mm. but uh, okay in my village we don't have that mm. but true there are some villages where there is that you cannot build even a decent house because utarogwa you cannot drive a good car utarogwa i think it's also time we up our game mm. as a community why would somebody not want the development of another lean if you had money today mm. and i didn't have eh? isn't that a good reason for me to come to you and ask for help I know you'll help right yes. so if you don't have and i don't have where will i get help no yeah yeah so i think we should allow each other to grow let's not uh, go into this witchcraft thing i don't know if it works mm. but i know it instills fear in people mm. to it it really instills a lot of fear it instills fear and then makes people not develop eh? mm. because the, because of that fear if i do this they're going to do this to mm. me yeah so i think we really need to change when it comes to that yeah mm. what other job opportunities are in the village because i feel like a lot of people think farming is the only thing no, you no, can no, do no 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 i really wish uh, yeah i was about to forget that yes <laughs> i said this the evolution of power mm. the evolution of uh, power made things uh, really it really opened up the villages and uh, anything i think any business you can do in the cities you can now do in the village yeah there's real estate in the village there we have a lot of uh, offices so even if you went mm-hmm. into real estate you'll still have people to rent your houses i think when you're coming in you saw some flats yes. over there painted in yellow yes yeah there are people who are who are in that living in that flat mm. and that is deep in the village mm. so the evolution of power has made everything possible in the village yeah you can go into real estate it's not just farming 
you can uh, there's a petrol station there there's a supermarket there's you just make mandazi you come sit here with your cup of tea and then you just eat and then the video is over why are you not opening a restaurant or something like that also okay i'm not thought you about you're still you're making tofu in the village <laughs> cheese man <laughs> <laughs> I'm like see you from where have a five star like that or tisha watu kidogo you know a bondo star yeah we should we should yeah. it's I'm, I'm actually planning mm. to get some place yeah. by the roadside mm. and just open a mall we need a mall in the village we don't have a mall yet we have a lot of stuff but we don't have a mall yes. we want the mall experience in the village and that is my long term plan good yeah but i'm really proud of you thank you so and much and the Lily. milestones that you you know just changing that you know narrative mm. that village life is boring that we can't like have a beautiful life in the village you are changing that sioni hata kama umechoka mimi hata ndio naka nimechoka na ati huku ndio kazi inafai kwenda i'm the one mwenye anaka amechoka no 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 yes. village is not boring mm. and uh, kisumu is about one hours drive yes when maybe i feel really low i love to i love long drives yeah. so when i'm really down or you see that route you took yes the t estates yeah beautiful i always love that view and yeah. i find it really therapeutic for me yes. so when i feel low i go that that route yeah when i want to jump a bit i head to kisumu it's Kisumi. not far yeah yes. and but, i still make it back home yeah. yeah but i know you love the village life but if i was to ask you for one thing you dislike about it what would it be i would say yeah. there are really a few things that have bothered me okay there are few mm. one of them it's all about my life but yes. uh, my community there is a bit of uh, social injustices mm-hmm. that uh, really make me sad mm. we've seen children being abused in the village and you know people just get away with it mm. it really hurts me I think there's one child I rescued the other day and he's gotten a new home and now I've become an enemy of the people <laughs> so there are also those challenges being in the village because mm. they just don't understand how you come into a family and pick a child just because you think we are being mistreated for them it should be something normal so that really cut that's deep mm. But I'm glad I rescued. I, I'm glad I did something good. As much as I'm seen as a bad person in the community or in that family, I know I did something right. I saved a child. And you used your voice. Yes. Na nikambeba nikampeleka hapo kwa children's welfare. There's evidence all over the child. It's been abused. That was I think one of my lowest moments. in the village. Mm. Mm. I feel you. I feel you. Then sometimes occasionally you'll miss the, the the noise. You know sometimes we as humans also you, you know when I'm just here most of the time I'm alone either I'm on my phone doing my stuff mm. but then sometimes you just need people around you. So those are the times I tell you I drive to Kisumu. party a bit with my friends yeah. and come home and come home mm. yeah when i enjoy nice kidogo yeah there's a you, times you just did until stuff you, off you, your head. until you can't take it anymore yes. then you come back home yes. yeah for me this is my dream you are living my dream life <laughs> thank you you are living my dream life you know you hear the chicken the cows Actually, they should be roaming here. I just locked them up today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Imejua kuna wageni. Yeah. Sasa huku situ situ kitoa vibuyu za wageni za Nairobi nyimo na vunjia ngombe. Yeah. I wanna wind up. But before I do, anyone that is watching you from across Africa or even across the world and they would want to come back to the village, what would you tell them? I would advise you to make that move fast mm. because i know most people are out there and they are really not happy i've had a lot of people dm me about how miserable their lives are Tell i was me. conned at some point 
uh, I was uh, I really wanted to go out there and uh, get myself some money to finish my house actually so I put some money in a, an agency which really seemed to be real because actually I was referred to by I was referred by someone I know mm. so it ended up being fake I lost my money how much uh, 250,000 and um, during that time I had already started my YouTube channel then I met a very special friend <laughs> on YouTube and she's like my sister now so we got too close to talking about our personal lives and uh, she's called Lynn she's in the US oh, it's a <laughs> So Lynn, Hi, Lynn. <laughs> yes. So Lynn uh, told me, Jail, actually after losing that money, I I didn't lose hope. Someone told me there's a way to go to the US. Yes. So you do this course, it's a CNA course, it's called a CNA course, the certified nursing assistant course. And with this, this is a sure ticket to the US. So I enrolled. <laughs> I just did that course and uh, after that, that's when I met Lynn, when I, I had, uh, I was just about to start my process of going yes. to the US. Yeah. I met Lynn and when we got personal, she told me, Jael, I'm here in the US and I'm a nurse. Yes, there's money here, but there's no life. There's no happiness. You have a life there. I watch you, you have, a, that is everybody's dream. We are here because we are forced by circumstances. But if I had a choice, that is the life I would live. Can you believe Lynn convinced me? And I just dropped <laughs> that whole process. <laughs> so she went into details. She told me a lot of stuff. Maybe others I may not say here, but she changed my mind. Yes. We are busy wanting for opportunities out there when mm. they are admiring what we have down here. She told me, Jail, it's not what you think. Many of us are afraid to come back, maybe because of uh, the kind of send off we were given, those farewell parties, guys saw us off, and then the people we left back at home have so much hope on us. And expectations. Yes, and expectations. So that is the reason some of us are not coming back, but it's not that good. She convinced me, mm. and here I am. I think I would be leaving in uh, February. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to meeting Lynn. We yes. haven't met, but she's not in my family because she calls even for three hours. Oh. We talk, and she tells me, I'll just pick up my call. This is where I relieve my stress. Yeah. And she told you the honest truth. Yeah, she told me. And she told me, girl, nobody's going to tell you this. Everybody's. Saying how yes. agent and that's it. Yeah, she told me it's no. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. And if I had somebody if someone told me the things I'm telling you before mm. I left, I wouldn't have come. Mm. Yeah. But now I'm here mm. and I'm trapped. She choose the word trapped. I'm trapped. Because I have bills to pay. I got into I bought a house. So I mean I have a mortgage. mortgage. I can't leave it. I have so many bills. I pay even for the air I breathe. <laughs> So she told me, no, you don't, don't mm. Mm. come. Just I don't mind inviting you to visit me, but don't come here to live. Mm. You have the best life there. I hope many people hear that <laughs> part of this conversation. Yeah. So yeah. Lynn changed my mind. I was really set to go. It's peaceful. Here. Yeah. So she made me even appreciate my life more because, you know, when, when I was here and then most of, at that time, my, I think at that point, the channel wasn't that big. Mm. It hadn't gotten to the place it is now. Yeah. And uh, most of the people who are watching, who are calling me, most of them, my friends maybe, who have my contacts, are really sympathizing with me. Can I get you something to do? I don't want a job. You, what part of this statement don't you understand, guys? I, I, I'm not looking for a job. I would have contacted you. I was looking for a job. I've had opportunities and I've given them to guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking for, I'm just fine here. And uh, it's so hard for people to understand 
that simple statement that you are comfortable in a village. Mm. But I hope watching my channel gives you a reason to want to stay in the village. It, it has. It has given many people a reason to want to be in the village. Mm. And I know it could change and it has changed many yeah. people's mindsets. Yes. I have a friend who is building in Bondo now and he calls and tells me, yeah, you are the reason I'm building in the village. There you go. Yes. Beautiful. And I'm so happy that... Yes. I'm finally changing lives. Yeah, and as I said earlier, start a consultancy firm, you know. It's very easy for people who are watching you now to want to walk the journey with you because True. they know you know about, you know, land, landscaping, beautiful houses. Yeah. Those who really want to live their life. So you could start a consultancy I, firm. I wouldn't mind doing it. Yes. You just gave me an idea. And I think I'm going to go ahead Do with it. it. Sure. Okay, she has 10%. <laughs> I'll come collect my check, but right now we got to wind up. Huh? Yeah, I just wish you all the best. Thank and thank you, so you for much, welcoming Lynn. us. Oh, thank you for coming. It's the seeds, it's the tree. At our nona when you're in a drug interview, when you're stuck in Isha, like NK, just they are telling me 10 times. Stuck in Isha, it's the weather for me. It's mm, the it's calmness. It's very cool, by the way. Same to a can to my friend, you know, they bring a chopper, I go do the interviews from there, and then I come back. Yeah, it's so but relaxed. it's been beautiful hanging. You are such a cool soul thank you. to hang thank out you, with, Lynn, you know. You yeah, yeah, what do you want to tell my people as we wind up? <gasps> and also, where can they find you? They already, I already asked them to check out your YouTube, but you can also tell them, give them a parting shot, and also remind them where they can find you. Okay, my advice to anyone aspiring to live in the village, start, okay, or not even for the village people. Yes. In whatever you do, do it well. You don't know who's watching. And whatever you want to do, just start. If you have a dream, start with whatever you have towards fulfilling that dream. One day, you will realize mm. your dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you want to tell your parents? I'm so, so grateful to them. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in my community, it is even an abomination to come and live in your in the house you are born at my age. Yes. But you see, we just live here. We are just comfortable. They yeah. welcomed me back. Yeah. And I'm building my house from their house. Yes. So it's uh, quite uh, nice. And I'm so grateful to them for mm -hmm. accepting me back. Yes. And uh, just giving me the peace I need to do my stuff. And opening the doors for you. Because yes. you could be stressed right now in the true, city because it's true, an ab true. abomination to come yeah. and live here. No, even but, many people. Hey, at 40, you're living in your parents' place. Mm. Why not? And it, I'm very comfortable. But baby. they are your parents for a reason. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they don't bother me. There you yeah, go. I do my thing. And yes. you see them just going about their business. Yes. I'm so, so, so grateful to mm. them. And for giving us the opportunity to go to good schools out there. Not many are yeah. lucky from the village, you know. So I am so, so grateful to them. Yes. Mm. Where can people find you? Okay. You can reach me on, uh, okay, I'm on Instagram as yes. uh, Jail of the Village. Yes. On YouTube as Jail of the Village. Mm. On Facebook as uh, Nyakwara Henda. Oh, wait. <laughs> that oh, is wait. a bit different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, and uh, also on Twitter, I just started a Twitter account the Good. other day. Yeah. An X account. Yes. So I'm also Jail of the Village on mm. Twitter. And on TikTok? I'm also on TikTok yeah. as uh, I mean, I love Jail of the Village. Jail just doing life. Yes. Yes. I actually quit Twitter. No, I just do TikTok oh, and YouTube. You're on yes. TikTok. I haven't yes. seen you on TikTok. Go on and see. I'm big. <laughs> Who can we start crazy? But anyways, <laughs> thank you, Jael, for welcoming us to your amazing you place. And Jana. also for your people. Just dad, just saying hello, your sister. They're just incredible thank people. Thank you. Thank you. Allowing so us to breathe this environment for a minute. Thank you. And I promise I'll come back more often please, please, to Kabondo Kabul, and just do so, so lots welcome. of stories. Yeah. yeah. Shall we wind up? Sure. Yes, my people breathe fresh air. Imagine you're here with me. Imagine you are easy trees. Just breathe. Imagine. 
yeah, it's good. I've brought you guys the experience right from where I am. So, Msijali, I'll carry this whole, you know, beautiful air for you back at home. The guys you who are watching, it's. I keep saying, Africans, we have a lot of things to offer. And we shouldn't be scared because being at a certain place makes us feel like we are at an advantaged position. I mean, look at her. This is, for me, is life. It's, a, it's my dream just to live in such a beautiful space. If you can and there's no pressure by the way if you have that piece of land back at home that you can easily develop to rudini to home sangine now natu venye tunateseka uko nairobi and we have to do it like i know it's a must sometimes we don't have a choice but if you get an opportunity to come back home and do it eh? just do it just do it don't worry about what is an abomination what will people say as long as here you are okay just do it i hope you guys you've learned something even to the people her channel is watched by a lot of people even outside Kenya. I hope I did justice with this interview for you guys. Continue supporting her. I cannot wait for you guys to see her mansion. Like I would have loved to go and give you the rough uh, view of it. But you know we are creatives. There are, there are boundaries we gotta respect. The people in her channel have followed her for so long. And I just think it's important. It's unveiled in her channel and then guys i'll post it to you on my community uh page yeah thank you so much also to our people at king's developers limited i love that today we are talking about investing going back to the village beautiful houses so if you are also looking at an apartment and you feel like i want something that hyena confusion just try my people at king's developers limited they have beautiful spaces from nakuru to boma to hapo kilimani kilelesho all these places is upper hill is where their offices are at prism towers just go and check them out and tell them lynn sent you and if you have a concern my email is right here info at lnn.digital or lynn.ngugi at lnn.digital msuwaini ogopa kuniambia i love bringing people or partners or sponsors that are credible i've done my due diligence and i love knowing hamtawai kuwa uko kwa news 10 years later saying lynn niali tuambia i vouch for kings i know who they are so go and try and invest with them and of course to thank my people at my daddy motors for always driving us leo nimekuja uku kama mdosi vile inafa niliambia watu wa maridadi watafute chopa lakini here we are it would have taken me 10 minutes to get to kabondo but eric you've decided i need to drive for six hours but i still appreciate it and my incredible team scholar uh, um, uh, muga and of course edgar and joshua for coming through and of course kevin sam for compiling this and making sure it reaches you guys right on time today you're gonna subscribe at my channel and subscribe to her channel do that it will mean a great deal to us see you next time bye bye